Welcome back to the online coaching discussions. This next, next discussion that we're going to have is on metabolism and energy systems. What is energy? So human bodies utilize something called adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. And it's a molecule that carries energy within its cells. It's the main currency of a cell and it's a, the main uh, molecule that our bodies used in order to utilize energy. Uh, so this is what our bodies will utilize for our processes, for, uh, for our brain function, for our organ function, but also our muscular skeletal systems. So there's a, a big process that we use adenosine diphosphate. We add phosphate to it and we get ATP or get energy. There are four energy pathways that we're going to talk about. There are anaerobic pathways and aerobic pathways. Anaerobic pathways are pathways that don't utilize oxygen. And then we have the aerobic pathway that utilizes oxygen. We're going to talk about all four pathways. We have ATP storage, creatine phosphate, glycolysis, and then the Krebs cycle. ATP storage. This system doesn't actually create energy. It's just a storage system within the muscles. Um, it's considered an anaerobic system, so it does not produce energy with oxygen. It, it produces or utilizes energy without oxygen. So it, the body uses ATP that is stored within the muscle cells themselves. You have enough ATP or enough energy for one explosive jump or the first few steps or strokes in a race. This may be in a running race, a swimming race, whatever it may be. So when you feel like a god, those first few strokes of a workout, this is maybe what you're utilizing. It produces a high amount of energy in a short period of time, but it can only be used for a maximum of three to five seconds. This system, the ATP storage system, is then replenished by the aerobic system through rest and recovery. So as you rest, the body restores ATP within the muscles. It does not do that very effectively during a workout. It's more when we have longer periods of rest and recovery. So a stronger aerobic system will actually replenish ATP storage faster than a de less developed aerobic system. Creatine phosphate system, or the CP system. This system takes creatine phosphate, CP, and it takes adenosine diphosphate that we talked about earlier and creates adenosine triphosphate. Um, now, you don't need to know everything to the left. Just a little image for you to, to kind of understand that there's some complexities here. Um, but the creatine phosphate system is considered an anaerobic system, meaning that it produces energy without oxygen. Creatine phosphate is stored within the muscle cells. All right, so we do have creatine phosphate stored within our muscle cells, utilized for this process. You have enough energy in your body for a maximum of 20 to 30 seconds of utilizing the creatine phosphate system as the primary role. It produces a short, uh, a lot of energy in a short amount of time, but it depletes very quickly. Again, this system is replenished by the aerobic system. So once you utilize creatine phosphate and all you have is creatine left over, you have to replenish that creatine phosphate. The aerobic system does that. So a stronger aerobic system will replenish creatine phosphate faster than a less developed aerobic system. Then you have glycolysis. This is very complex. You do not need to know the complexities of that. But I wanted to show you that it is a complex system of what's going on. It basically breaks down glycogen or sugars. So it breaks down glucose or glycogen within the, within the muscles into ATP. That's it. That's its process. It's, again, a considered an anaerobic system, meaning it produces energy without oxygen. Glucose is stored glycogen in muscles, all right? 
this has enough energy, this system has enough energy for two to three minutes of energy. Usually the, the best way to describe this one is you're doing as many push-ups as you possibly can. You have that burning sensation that, that's occurring, that um, kind of uh, claustrophobic feeling, right? That you're just like, you're pushing to that edge, all right? This is that, this is that system um, and that, that time period that's at play, that two to three minutes of just pushing to that red line. It produces a moderately high amount of energy in a short time, depletes quickly, but not as quickly as the creatine phosphate system, right? It's very different between ATP storage, which is five seconds, creatine phosphate, which is 30 seconds, glycolysis, which is three minutes. Again, this system is replenished by the aerobic system. So a, strongest, a stronger aerobic system will replenish the glycolysis system and get it set up for the next push faster than a less developed aerobic system. Um, I'm sorry, I do have a creatine phosphate down there from not switching it over when I, when I, um, uh, when I duplicated the, the screen and duplicated the slide, but yes. A stronger aerobic system will replenish gly the glycolysis system back to homeostasis faster than a less developed aerobic system. And then you have the Krebs cycle, or also known as the aerobic system. This system is considered the aerobic system, meaning that it produces energy with oxygen. All right, this system has an indefinite energy system, uh, it uses carbohydrates, proteins, and fats as fuel. Um, more efficient systems, more efficient humans will utilize fats more quickly than carbohydrates, though carbohydrates are the preferred method of utilizing energy and breaking down um, carbs, proteins, and fats into energy. The human body wants carbs over fats, but humans who are more efficient and more conditioned as well as um, more trained will utilize more fats than carbs. It produces medium amounts of energy, but over a long period of time. All right. Um, it does all the other functions and energy for the body. This system replenishes all the other energy systems that we have. So if you're doing interval training and you're pushing for 25 yards all out sprint in the pool, then the aerobic system will replenish that creatine phosphate system that you're using. And if you take three to four minutes of complete rest, the aerobic system will hopefully have enough time to replenish that so you can do the next interval at a good time. So you're able to, tr a stronger aerobic system means you're able to train harder, run faster, lift heavier, do one more rep or one more set during your workout and achieve your goals more quickly than your less aerobic counterparts. Here's the Krebs cycle. All right, for you. Um, I'm going to put it up there, and I'm going to move on. Just for your own satisfaction to be able to look at it. So in summary for metabolism and energy systems, in a nutshell, all right, there's four energy systems. Three are anaerobic without oxygen. One is aerobic with oxygen. Anaerobic systems are ATP storage, creatine phosphate, and glycolysis, which are different uh, maximum time frames that they can be utilized and different types of energy that they produce. A strong aerobic system is most important to achieve one's fitness goals because you're able to replenish and push harder with every subsequent set, every subsequent day, every subsequent workout. All systems are engaging most of the time. Take a, gr take a look at the graph to the right. So just because you push for five seconds all out doesn't mean that ATP storage is the only thing that's working. No, what's happening is you're gradually moving into one system to the next. So you start utilizing ATP storage, then you go into creatine phosphate, then you go into glycolysis, then you go into, um, then you go into the Krebs cycle. All right, so you, just little by little, you're going into those other um, other energy systems, okay? And you're slowly pushing that direction. So um, this is the summary for me uh, metabolism and energy systems. I want you to utilize it. I really want you to understand that we 
all of these things are different skill sets. So I don't want you to think about, oh, I'm just training as hard as possible. That's not the case here. We're not trying to train as hard as possible at all times. That's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is one day we're trying to improve our creatine phosphate system. One day we're trying to improve our glycolysis system. One day we're trying to improve our aerobic system. And so we're working on skill sets. Every workout we do has a specific goal and a specific focus that we're looking at for, for each day. So that way that as athletes, we're able to really develop well-rounded bodies to have all of these skill sets that we can utilize when we're racing or when we're time trialing or just in general, just as healthy humans. So thank you for joining in. We will see you at the next discussion.